Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you're interested in going to a coding bootcamp, make sure you give them a look. The link is in the description tab below. They're focusing on all the latest web development technologies that you need to get your foot in the door in the industry as quickly as possible. So when we look at the difference between two languages like Java and Python, um, every programming language has something called a type system. And a type system is really just a classification of data. Uh, every programming language has this classification, and it is unique to, it, it, to its own language. Um, different types consist of things like strings, arrays, you know, terms, and, uh, and, and things that you're familiar with if you've been programming for any length of time. Um, so Python has its own set of types that it understands, lists, dic dictionaries, things like that, whereas Java uh, has arrays and, um, and, and other things. So basically, different languages have different types. WebAssembly has only four different types. So the type systems of both Python and Java are somewhat similar in the, in the sense that both languages are actually derived from uh, the C programming language that was invented back in the 1970s. So they're both C-based languages um, with the, the main difference being that Python is a dynamically interpreted language, whereas Java is a statically uh, typed language. And, and the difference between those two is that in a statically typed language, there are there are processes that go through during the compilation to make sure that the, that the types match up. That you're not trying to add an int to a string and things like that. Um, and, and and at um, compile time, you know, even before the, the program is executed, the compiler is going to complain about those 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 types um, conflicts and things like that. So that's that's considered a, a type safe language. So essentially, between the two, you're going to get compile um, compile time errors with with type conflicts in a statically typed language like Java, whereas Python, you're going to get a runtime error uh, as the program is actually executing and it runs into the problem and it crashes and dies right there. Um, so in Java, you're not even going to be able to compile the program. So both languages have a long history, but Python is a little bit older than Java. Python was first released in uh, 1991 by a guy named uh, Guido Van Rossum. The name itself actually is just a, um, almost like an afterthought, according to Guido. He just basically says that, like he was just in like a whatever type of mood and decided to name it Python uh, for the Monty Python's Flying Circus movie that he was like a big fan of. Um, and he actually came up with that working title in 1988. So even though the first version of Python was released in 91, um, yeah, he named it back in 88. The Java programming language, on the other hand, was invented in 1995 by a company called Sun Microsystems that was acquired by Oracle in 2010. The language itself was mostly designed by a guy named John, um, I'm sorry, James Gosling. Um, Gosling was born in Canada. He now lives in San Francisco. He, he's done a lot of stuff. He's actually, he left Sun Microsystems um, after Oracle acquired them in 2010. And um, and now I believe he's working for Amazon Web Services, according to uh, his Wikipedia article. But um, still, like considered a like godfather in the programming industry, one of the most famous programmers out there. Both Python and Java are object-oriented programming languages, where Java is a fully object-oriented language. Python can be written in a procedural way, where um, where Java cannot be, but Python can also be written in a fully object-oriented way as well. So. Um, and every and, and Python, everything is an object, and it all derives from a, you know class-based system. So uh, very similar to Java in that in that regard. When it comes to speed, um, both the Java and Python have runtime environments. Um, so that being said, Python being dynamically interpreted versus Java's like statically typed bindings. Java is naturally going to be much faster at runtime than Python because Python has to do a lot of overhead work being dynamically typed to look up functions, look up uh, definitions. It's duct typed. Um, it, there's, a, there's a lot of overhead that Python's doing being that it is dynamically interpreted. That gives a lot of power to a, de a developer, but when you're looking for actual raw speed, uh, a statically typed language uh, like Java is going to be just naturally much faster. Um, and C and C++ is going to be even faster than that because um, th that you know th those static types and everything are actually known um, during whatever the hell it's called linker time. I, you know you know you guys know what I mean. Hopefully. So when it comes to the learning curve, Python's going to win hands down. It's actually the most taught language. It, it's the most taught language in universities around the world, not just in the United States. 
Uh, the main reason being is that it's just easily um, read compared to other languages. And here's an example. This is a Python threading example. Um, Somewhat complex, I guess, for beginners that are just looking at Python, but you can see that Python has no curly braces, which uh, most other programming languages do adhere to some sort of curly brace standard, which uh, derives from C. But Python is more about uh, readabil readability and code indentation, and your indentation has to be uh, has to match up correct. While Java um, source code is going to be a little bit more verbose, it's a very um, it's all class based, and, and there's objects, so everything's going to be a class, objects, methods. Um, and um, you can see here that it does have the curly brace syntax and it looks very similar to a Java script or even a, a C um, language. So if you can read one, you could probably read the other. I mean, once you become a, um, an experienced programmer, one language doesn't really look that much different than others, really. Um, so you have to kind of really step outside your comfort zone to find something that, that is really, really different, like, you know, Haskell or something like that. When it comes to game development, uh, most serious game developers are probably going to say you're going to want to stick with something like C++ just because there's just not the, the same amount of libraries available even now um, for Java compared to something like C++. Python is not even in the gaming sphere at all. Like um, You'll hear some of the stuff like you know Python was used in EVE Online or something like that, but it was really used for like tying servers together uh, and scripting and things like that, so it wasn't really being used as like a game engine type of thing. You're never going to use it dynamically and interpreted language like Python to write uh, games like even Minecraft. Now, Minecraft is an example, though, of a game that was written in nothing but Java um, using the OpenGL um, uh, graphics framework, technically library or specification. When it comes to web development, both of them shine. Java is used in the corporate world. You're going to see so many different, like, large, multi-tiered applications uh, and, and entire organizational structures that are using Java, like things like um, uh, all of uh, Google Plus is using Java mostly. So um, Google uses it heavily. A lot of different companies are going to be using Java heavily, but the same can be said for Python as well. Most of YouTube is written in Python, Reddit.com, Instagram. Um, so major websites are being, are, are being used for both languages. So if you're, if you're a web developer, um, <clears throat> I would actually lean probably towards Python more than Java, I would say, in, in that regard. When it comes to artificial intelligence or machine learning, Python leads the pack by far, not just ahead of Java, but it's ahead of all other languages by far. Um, something like nearly 60% of all data scientists right now are actually using Python day-to-day uh, -day for all their machine learning and data analysis. Um, the second most used language is going to be C++, but then Java is going to come in somewhere around, uh, or it may not be C++ actually, I don't remember. Anyway, Java is going to come in around somewhere with C, C++, but it's like fourth or fifth in the pack when it comes to uh, machine learning. So if you're going to be like a, a data scientist or you're interested in that sort of field, then you clearly you're going to want to choose Python. When it comes to robotics, Python's going to lead Java just barely, but both are used quite heavily in robotics, and Python's actually had a... Um, a relative resurgence with robotics and, and especially I think some of it has to do with like the um, you know the Raspberry Pi and like uh, really there was been like it seemed like there was a large push towards getting you know people to be future engineers and like you know getting uh, everybody involved I, it just seemed like I, I saw like an explosion of that towards like the um, but the bottom line is that Python is actually used a lot for its ease of use it's it goes back to why it's the most taught language it's, it goes back to why kids like it why startups like it it's it's free it's easy to read it's easy to use um, and that's also why it's used in robotics when it comes to mobile applications Java blows away Python it's not even close it's not even it's like a hundred million miles between the two probably JVM also is something that's used widely now. So Java JVM is, is the Java virtual machine and it's just Java bytecode, but there are now languages written to use that Java JVM, languages like Kotlin and Scala. Um, Kotlin is actually exploding in Android development right now. So um, yeah, if you, if you know Java, you, you can definitely be an Android developer. And for Python, there's a Python Kiwi project, but the Kiwi project is just... Uh, uh, it, it just uh, it, it doesn't compare. Um, so if you're interested in mobile app development, at least for Android, um, you're definitely going to want to stick with Java. And, um, you know, as far as a Apple is concerned, you're going to go with Swift or Objective-C. 
so when it comes to jobs, Python and Java are actually neck and neck right now, just because there's so many data scientists and everything. And, and Python exploded in web development and like, like all for all the reasons mentioned, Python's just exploding everywhere. It seems like, and I've actually been talking about it for a long time. So all you people that doubted me for, especially going back like 10 years ago or close to that, like there were some people I, I'd be like, yeah, I like Python. I like Perl, things like that. And, um, they're like, you know, all they ever knew was like .NET or C Sharp or something. Like I've been, I was, I've, I've been talking about Python for years, is, is what I'm saying, and like some people weren't listening. Uh, but anyway, um, Python is exploding here. You can see this chart. Like uh, Python is just completely exploded. So when we look at the difference between these two languages in 2018, right now at the time of this video, both languages are, are extremely well. Like if you're a Java developer, you're probably good for the rest of your career. If you're a Python person, you're definitely good. Python's the more trendy language. It's going to be the more hip language uh, at this point, even though it's older. Um, and I, I don't really think that the popularity is going to going to change anytime soon, just because it, it's all about ease of use. Um, it, it's always been that way, so we can always optimize uh, for less powerful languages and and uh, and focus on ease of use because the majority of your costs are going to be in, in software developer hours and, and man hours and things like that, and not in the hardware where it used to be the hardware. Um, we're actually seeing, uh, and we have you know, for a long time, that, that software developer salaries are much more expensive than the actual hardware to run programs and things like that. So just throw some more hardware, it's cheaper than more people. All right, guys, that's it. So thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, vote up the video. I appreciate all your support, and have a good night, everybody. Bye.